So in this chapter we are going to talk about upthrust in fluids Archimedes principle and the concept of flotation Get started with the concept of buoyancy and upthrust when a body is partially or wholly immersed in a liquid an upward force acts on it this upward force is known as upthrust or buoyant force it is denoted by the symbol of fb the sink and the float of any object on the surface of water or inside the surface of water is basically dependent upon this concept of upthrust or buoyant force the upward force exerted on a body by the fluid in which it is submerged is called the upthrust or buoyant force this is the example of upthrust like this is a weight of boat that means how much force weight is here applying on the water and similarly water is also applying a force upwards to the ship this is basically the buoyant force experiment one pushing an empty can into a water if we push i i'm sure that you might have done this experiment by yourself in your childhood if we push the can into water we feel an upward force which opposes the push and we find it difficult to push the can further into water it is also noticed that as the can is pushed more and more into water more and more force is needed to push the can further into water till it is completely immersed when the can is fully inside a water a constant force is still needed to keep it stationary in that position this is the maximum upthrust on the can now if the can is released at this position it is noticed that the can bounces back to the surface and starts floating again experiment 2 pushing a cork into the water this is also something that you might have done in your childhood if we push the cork into water we feel an upward force which opposes the push and we find it difficult to push the cork further into water it is also noticed that as the cork is pushed more and more into water more and more force is needed to push the cork further into water till it is completely immersed when the cork is fully inside the water then also a constant force is still needed to keep it stationary in that position otherwise buoyant force will make it jump to the surface of water it is the maximum upthrust on the cork now if the cork is released at this position it is noticed that a cork bounces back to the surface and starts floating again because of the buoyant force now condition for a body to float or sink in a fluid if buoyant force is greater than weight or if buoyant force is equals to weight weight of the body that means force applied by the body on the surface of water then the body will float it will not sink if in case the buoyant force is greater than the weight of the body the body will float partially immersed with only that much part of it inside the liquid the upthrust fb due to which becomes equal to the weight w of body that is fb equals to w but if force buoyant force acting on the body equals to weight of the body the body will float with whole of it just immersed inside the liquid it will still float but whole of it will be just inside the liquid thus for a floating body net force acting downwards apparent weight is zero then Now second condition if buoyant force acting on the body is lesser than the weight of the body then the body will sink due to net force acting on the body downwards because the resultant force will be greater and this will help the body to sink and this happens mostly in the case of heavy material characteristic properties of upthrust larger the volume of a body submerged in a fluid greater is the upthrust example When a bunch of feeders and a pebble of same masses are allowed to fall in air, the pebble falls faster than the bunch of feeders. The reason is that upthrust due to air on pebble is less than that on the bunch of feeders because the volume of pebble is less than that of bunch of feeders of same masses. However, in vacuum, both the bunch of feeders and pebble will fall together because there is no upthrust there. second for the same volume of a body inside a fluid more the density of fluid greater will be the upthrust like for example place a piece of cork a in water and another identical cork b in glycerin it is observed that both a and b floats but the volume of cork b immersed in glycerin is smaller as compared to the volume of cork a immersed in water the reason is that the density of glycerin is more than that of water 
Now, if we want to immerse cork B in glycerin to the same extent as cork A in water, then an additional force will be required to immerse it to the same level as cork A. This shows that for the same volume of a body inside the liquid, a denser liquid exerts a greater up thrust, greater buoyant force. Third, the up thrust acts on body in upward direction at the center of buoyancy that is the center of gravity of the displaced fluid. Here you can see with the example for a uniform body completely immersed inside a liquid, the center of buoyancy coincides with the center of gravity of the body. But if a body floats in a liquid with its parts submerged, the center of buoyancy B is at the center of gravity of the displaced liquid which lies below the center of gravity G of the entire body. The weight of body W acts downward at G while up thrust force, bind force acts upward at P such as weight equals to FP. Factors affecting the up thrust. First, volume of the body submerged in liquid or fluid. Density of the liquid in which the body is submerged. Then we have Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle states that when a body is immersed partially or completely in a liquid, it experiences an up thrust which is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by it. Here you can see some of the experiment of Archimedes principle. The clock was weighted 7 kg before it was thrown into the water. When it is thrown into the water, the buoyant force acting on it is making it feel as it was of 2 kg. So the apparent loss in weight is equal to the up thrust on body. Now coming to the density, the density of a substance is its mass per unit volume. Density of a substance equals to formula. This is formula for a density of a substance is mass of the substance by volume of the substance. Density is a scalar quantity because the concept of direction is not involved here. Unit of density is kilogram per meter cube. Here you can see the substance which has very compact material, a building which has high density. Uh, then we have medium density and this substance is built up a very loose material. So this is basically the low density substance. Now relative density. The relative density of a substance is the ratio of density of that substance to the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. How to calculate relative density? Relative density equals to mass of any volume of substance by mass of an equal volume of water. Or another formula, density of substance by density of water at 4 degrees Celsius, mass of unit volume of substance by mass of unit volume of water at 4 degrees Celsius. Then we have mass of a certain volume of substance by mass of an equal amount of water at 4 degrees Celsius. Then if you have principle of rotation, when a body is immersed in a liquid, the following two forces act on it. First, the weight of the body acting vertically downwards through the center of gravity G of the body. This force has a tendency to sink the body. Second, the up thrust of the liquid acting vertically upwards through the center of buoyancy B, the center of gravity of the displaced liquid. The up thrust is always equal in magnitude to the weight of liquid displaced. This force has a tendency to make the body float as per the principle of rotation. Now you can see in magnitude, weight equals to volume of body into density of body into G and buoyance force equals to volume of submerged part of body into density of liquid into G. Then we have case 1 when weight is greater than the buoyant force the weight of body is greater than the weight of displaced liquid that means the body will sink. In case 2 when weight of the body is equal to the weight of displaced liquid the body will float just below the surface of liquid the apparent weight of body will be zero this happens in the case of light wood. Now we have case 3 when the weight of body is less than the weight of liquid displaced by it then the body floats partially above and partially below the surface of liquid that happens in case of cork etc. Weight of body equals to weight of liquid displaced by the submerged part of body or W equals to FP. Apparent weight of a floating body is then zero. This is called the principle of flotation. The weight of floating body is equal to the weight of liquid displaced by its submerged part as per the principle of flotation. Application of this principle of flotation. First, flotation of iron ship. An iron nail sinks in water while a ship floats. If we place an iron nail on the surface of water, it will sink. 
This is because the density of iron is greater than that of water. So the weight of nail is more than the upthrust of water in it and that is why it will sink. But a loaded ship is submerged more while an unloaded ship is less submerged. When cargo is loaded on a sailing ship, its weight increases so it sinks further to displace more water till the weight of water displaced by its submerged part becomes equal to the weight of loaded ship. If cargo is unloaded, the ship will rise in water till the weight of water displaced becomes balanced to the weight of a loaded ship. Now a ship begins to submerge more as it sails from sea water to river water. This happens because of the change in density. The water of a river is of low density than that of sea. The density of water of different seas is also different. Therefore, when a ship sails from sea of higher water density to a sea of lower water density or say to a river water, it sinks further. The reason is that according to the law of flotation, to balance the weight of a ship, a greater volume of water is required to be displaced in water of lower density in river and that is why it used to sink. It is easier for a man to swim in sea water than fresh or river water. This is also because of density of water. Because Due to the presence of minerals, the density of sea water is more than the density of fresh river and this is why it is easier for a man to swim in sea water than in a fresh or river water. That's all in the lecture. See you in the next chapter.